All right. Well, this is Nicole with Ecom Sellers. I actually did not mean to go live yet. <laughs> But, you know, the technology gets away from you. So um, I am hoping I'm not live on another platform and I am trying to go live. So I apologize. Just give me a second and then we'll get right into it. Um, okay. This is so funny. So I hope that you all are doing well this morning. <laughs> I am typing as fast as I can. Sometimes technology just does not work the way you need it to. But in any case, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. How has your new year been so far? Let me just tell you, the life of an entrepreneur is uh, sometimes a lot. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the morning when you're trying to get your kids out the door and when you're trying to work on stuff for your business. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the evening. And uh, I feel like sometimes I need a hidden camera to follow me around because it is sometimes very crazy. But in any case, I am so glad to be here and I'm so blessed. And I hope that you are having an amazing start to the new year. So with that, I think I'm almost live on the other platform. Let me just tell you, again, technology doesn't always work out for you. Um, <laughs> this is bananas. Okay, copy. I think I got it. That's all right, guys. You gotta give me a little grace and mercy. That's my word for the year is grace because of the fact that there's so many crazy things happening. Not just for me, but you know, for other people as well. It's been a uh, start to a crazy year. All right. I think, I think we're live now. So hello, my name is Nicole Whitlock, and this is the daily econ planning session. In the daily econ planning session today, we're going to be talking about eBay versus Etsy, Etsy versus eBay. This will be our opportunity to figure out where we want to sell in 2023. So um, we do these sessions every day. Got up this morning. 6.30 to get started. And of course, I got derailed immediately because I got another email. I have to stop looking at my emails. I keep saying I'm going to stop looking at it. But anyway, so let's go after this. <laughs> this is the daily econ planning session. And so we're going to be covering eBay versus Etsy. Um, before we get into the eBay versus Etsy, I do want to invite you to um, go and download the daily econ planning checklist. You can go to the e-commerce planning Facebook group, click on the file section and download the daily, weekly and monthly planning checklist to help you on your journey. Um, as you go through that file section, um, again, feel free to review any of them as well, because if you have not participated in the weekly planning session or the monthly planning session this month, this is a great time to kickstart your plan for the year. So go download those or go listen to the recording of the replay for the weekly and the monthly planning session. So with that, let's get into the eBay versus Etsy, Etsy versus eBay. For this one, I thought it was a little interesting. Um, I did do a little bit of research because I like infographics and I don't have one created. So I just went and grabbed one. But um, so here are two charts. Um, one, the eBay pros and cons and the Etsy pros and cons. And this comes to us from Shopify. So you can find this on your own. But um, I'm going to, of course, add a few things um, based on things that they may not have included. So selling on eBay, they are two different platforms. Um, you'll find a lot of, uh, you, you have the option to sell a lot of different products on both of them, but um, Etsy is going to give you uh, a few more limitations than eBay will. So that is the one, one of the biggest things. And eBay has a bigger audience than Etsy. So that's another big thing. The other thing is um, people that are going to eBay may be looking for for bargains, whereas Etsy people are more likely to pay the price that you have listed, which I believe is absolutely true. So let's get into the pros and cons of selling on eBay. So you can get discovered by your customers easier than on Etsy. I do think that that is somewhat true. Etsy does have a lot of categories. They have a lot of 
um, you know, uh, products that you can sell, but the design and the layout is just, it's different. Um, you can almost sell anything. Absolutely true. Uh, eBay offers auctions and buy it now options. That is absolutely true. And it's easy to set up, easy to use. I think eBay is fairly easy to get started selling on it. And I think it's pretty easy to use. It's easy for buyers and it is easy for sellers. They do have a larger marketplace, um, like a global audience. That's absolutely true. And they have seller protections and they have a PayPal integration. You know, the seller hub on eBay is really um, easy to use. It's evolved over the years when I got started. Like, I'm sure it was much, 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 much different than before I got started. But I got started in 2014 on eBay. And, um, you know, the seller hub has evolved over the years. I think it's gotten better and better. So I do appreciate that. The cons of selling on eBay is that they do charge um, higher fees. Like they have uh, higher fees than Etsy and eBay can be expensive as you add it up. Um, all of the different fees. Now eBay is, and I believe, cheaper to sell on than Amazon. But anyway, um, they do have higher fees. Uh, unreliable buyers, because they are bargain shoppers, you're going to have more people looking for deals. They, there is some high competition, but I feel like you can get your products found. Um, so it's just the way that the listing displays, it's going to go in a vertical, like when someone is looking for a specific uh, product and they put it in the search, they're going to vertically look. So they're going to have to scroll through other people's options. And so yours may not be at the top. It may not be in the top three or four. And if the person is not a scroller, they're not going to find it, but there are bargain shoppers. So yes, there's some high competition over there. Uh, unfavorable uh, resolution on disputes. eBay favors buyers over sellers. I do believe that's true, even though they do have seller protection. And a listing products is not as easy than it is on Etsy. Um, I do believe that that's true. Although eBay does have some, you know, um, they have different tools. Like you can do... Um, bulk listings with spreadsheets and they have some integration options. So I think both both of them have integration options. Um, Etsy's integration options are slightly different. Um, so Etsy, pros and cons. So it's a large mar marketplace for unique and handmade products. Absolutely. If you're looking for something unique and people are willing to pay on Etsy, I will say that. If it's unique, it's handmade, um, they're there's a lot of different things that you can sell on Etsy. It is easy to set up. They have multiple payment options or multiple payment methods. Yep. Um, good sense of community. Absolutely. Um, lower charges to sellers. So um, Etsy wins in terms of Etsy fees versus eBay fees. The thing is, is that if you have a lot of Etsy listings over time, like even with eBay, like eBay will give you um, typically every month, uh, if you have a store or even if you don't have a store, like they'll give you, um, free listing, uh, fees, um, a certain number, like, you know, a hundred free listings or, you know, 50 free listings or whatever the case may be. Um, Etsy's going to charge you. And so, you know, as you continue to list, 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 that 20 cents adds up over time. <laughs> um, it is an easy listing process, very straightforward. The screen is easy to follow. Um, buyers don't mind paying more, which is what I've said before. Um, the cons of selling on Etsy is more time. It's more con time consuming as listings need to be created separately for each product. And that is true. So like on, um, eBay, you can do sell yours, um, or sell mine. I forget what the button says any day anyway. Um, whereas Etsy, like if I wanted to create a variation, like I need to copy my text and everything to duplicate my listing. Um, and then if I'm, you know, changing the color up or whatever, uh, you can't sell everything. There are some product limitations and product restrictions. Yep. Yeah. eBay has product uh, restrictions, but Etsy will only allow you to sell certain things. So like I can sell toys on eBay all day long. And the only kind of toys I can sell on Etsy are uh, vintage or I can sell, and, I, and even those, uh, they won't even, some of them, they won't even let you put those up, but handmade, they'll let you do that all day long. Um, it's not easy getting discovered by customers. That's true. You literally have to put in the right words for people to find it. And so when people are looking at on Etsy, they're looking in a, a horizontal view 
And so it's scrolling from right to left or seeing it from right to left um, on the page. And there can be a lot depending on that person's first um, image or, you know, showcase image, profile image, whatever. Um, lack of customization when it comes to listings and no ownership of the data collection. You can't um, create an email list of your customers. Well, I mean, if you want to do it manually, you can. So, and, you know, depending on what your integrations are. So I think when it comes to integrations, both of them have a lot of integrations. They also have different tools, although eBay has a lot of built-in tools to help you create good listings. Etsy does has a lot of third, well, has a couple third-party tool options to help you um, to create better listings. So, you know, you're going to pay less than tools to be able to help you to get your listings up and to get... Um, you know, get your listings rank on eBay, then you go on Etsy. Um, E-Rank is a great tool to use on Etsy uh, to help you to figure out what the words are that people are searching for the different products, especially the product that you want to sell. So in any case, again, this is eBay versus Etsy, Etsy versus email. You decide which one you think is going to make sense for the product that you are selling. I think that's the biggest thing you need to, uh, when you're looking at a platform to sell on in 2023, you need to figure out what it is specifically that you're selling and where is your niche audience? Where's your audience going to most, most likely be based on the products that you're selling? And that's how I would make that decision. So it also may depend on your e-commerce method. Both of them will allow you, like you can do print on demand. Print on demand products are most likely found on Etsy over eBay. People are going to search on Etsy. Um, the, there are print-on-demand products that you'll find on eBay, and yes, you can um, sell uh, printables and downloadables on eBay. But again, people are most likely going over to Etsy to kind of find us find that kind of stuff. So again, you need to decide what it is you're selling, what's your niche, and where is your audience going to reside. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that you will tune in again as we continue to cover this versus. And you'll share this out with a friend, let somebody else know about the daily econ planning session. So maybe they can make some decisions on where they want to sell in 2023. All right. So with that, we invite you to turn up the dial on your business and get laser focused. And we encourage you to grab the 2023 My Econ Planner. It was created for sellers by sellers. The My Econ Planner, you can go to myeconplanner.com. Again, myeconplanner.com to grab the 2023 e-commerce planner. Use it every day to help you to be consistent and to make progress in your business. And you can schedule a free coaching session by going to ecomsellers.com, clicking on free resources and scheduling a free 20 minute coaching session. Let's talk about your business. I've actually had a few, uh, several uh, coaching sessions, but 2023 is uh, got kicked off with a bang. I've had several free coaching sessions where we kind of outline what their action steps are for their business and what they need to do to get more consistent, to get focused um, and giving them a game plan. So if you want a game plan, give me a high level game plan then definitely schedule a free 20 minute coaching session because that is one of the things that sometimes we're all challenged with trying to do the things that we need to do, whether it's be, be a parent, be a coach, be a teacher, be a whatever, and, you know, run our e-commerce business as well. There's so many hats that we wear as human beings. And so sometimes getting someone else's input on where you are in your journey might help you along the way. So go ahead and schedule a free 20 minute coaching session. And in addition to that, I do invite you to get some support on your e-commerce journey. Join Ecom Sellers Academy. You can go to ecomsellersacademy.com. It's terribly affordable, $17.99 a month. We get uh, free retail and online arbitrage leads list, free um, wholesale list uh, each week, and then also a free live uh, weekly training. Um, we do about uh, 48, 46 trainings a year. So there's a few times in which we're not doing trainings, but for the most part, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night, free training. Now, um, let's go ahead and review the daily econ planning checklist. If you didn't already do so, go download it. Um, you can go to, again, the e-commerce planning Facebook group, go to the file section and download the uh, daily econ planning checklist. Afterwards, if you want to continue the discussion, talk about your business, talk about where you are. 
let's have a conversation. Let's have a chat about it. You can join us on Clubhouse, go to the Econ Sellers Club, and let's continue that conversation. All right. So thank you for your grace and mercy as I dealt with technology issues this morning. It's nothing like technology issues. It's so much fun. It is so much fun. <laughs> All right, there's three things we're going to focus on as we go through our daily econ planning checklist. One is the things you should do the night before. In everything that you read, any article that you read, the majority of them, 90% of them are going to tell you that setting yourself up for success the night before is game changing. So if you're a person that is struggling with just making progress every single day, set yourself up for success by planning the night before. So we're going to talk about what some of the things you should be doing the night before. And then we'll talk about what you should be doing the morning of, and then we'll talk about some advanced planning. So the first thing the night before, again, setting yourself up for success, there's a bunch of planning and organizing, or, uh, organizing blogs and articles that are out there in the universe right now. Um, and so because there's so many blogs and articles out here in the universe, just about e-commerce, you know, and about not or e-commerce, about entrepreneurs and also about just being individuals and getting organized, getting focused, how to uh, establish or establish goals in 2023 and how to achieve your goals in 2023. There's so many articles and they are telling you that one of the things that you can do to help you be successful when you have established some goals is to Go ahead the night before and build your schedule. What are the things I need to get done tomorrow? Whether it be in detail form or in high level form, picking out your top three or top five or actually breaking it down because time gets away from you. Building a schedule and saying or indicating what you're going to do, whether it's a schedule or a checklist or whether it's even a list of small goals, whatever it happens to be, putting together an agenda for tomorrow, you will not go wrong. Now, you may not always execute 100% of it, but you won't go wrong. So the night before, we encourage you to build your schedule or build a checklist, one or the other, whatever works for you, the things that you need to get done tomorrow. Um, and that's one of the things that we encourage you to do. And also, before you go to bed, we also encourage you to go through and review how you did today based on the previous checklist that you'd already built. So how did you do? How did the day go? Um, what progress did you make? What progress did you not make? What needs to be moved and carried over until tomorrow? So assessing the day and reviewing the day and seeing how you did, one of the first things that you do. The next is to go through and update your daily tracking stats, indicating how many listings you created, how many sales you had. There's a list inside of the Ecom Planner, but go through and outline the things that you, uh, what your stats are and, and what progress you made. Then number three, before you go to bed, uh, review your personal and your business and your job, if you have a job, online calendars. Those online calendars are going to remind you of, oh, tomorrow you have that doctor's or dentist appointment. Oh, tomorrow you're supposed to go get your car inspected. Oh, tomorrow you're supposed to, whatever it happens to be. So those online calendars have those online reminders and glancing at it just so you know what you need to do is not going to hurt. It's actually going to help. Then you're going to build your schedule, your checklist, or your to-do list for tomorrow. So once you've assessed the day, you'll know what you need to carry over to tomorrow. Build that checklist. Include as many things as possible, not just your business stuff, but everything else that you got going on. If you've got fitness is one of the things that you're working to improve in 2023 or your health, if there's some household things that you need to get done, maybe your child is, uh, you know, joining band or sports or something and you got to remember to, you know, go get their uniform or go get their equipment or whatever it happens to be. Like put those things on your list. That's going to help you to reduce um, living in a reactionary world, living in a world where you're responding to or dealing with things that you've overlooked, forgotten. You're like, oh, I forgot I got to go to the dry cleaners today. Or, oh, I forgot I needed to pick up those cupcakes for class. Like that's going to reduce that because you're building that schedule in advance. You're going through and you're looking at your online stuff that you made notes on. And you're just refreshing your memory on the things that you need to tackle tomorrow. So build that checklist or build that schedule so you can have a much uh, lower stressed out day. <laughs> reduce your stress level or manage your stress levels. Then the morning of the things that we encourage you to do is to go back and reassess yesterday. 
reassess it because of the fact that um, sometimes when we're reviewing stuff the night before we go to bed, uh, right before we go to bed, we overlook them. It may have been an exhausting day. It may have been a stressful day. So we're going to go back and we're going to re-review yesterday. And that's going to help us um, as we add the extra stuff that we may have overlooked or forgot. It's going to help us build a better schedule in the future. It's going to help us to identify some of the patterns or lessons learned that we're not really truly paying attention to, that we're not truly aware of because we're just kind of floating through life. And that happens to all of us. The next is to review your upcoming weekly, the this week's priorities and also this week's habits that you're working to track and stay on top of. So what are those things that you're working to track? Be more consistent in. Go through and update your priorities and your habits. Um, and then glance at your monthly calendar. What did you put on your monthly calendar for your business and for your personal what did you write in your planner? So go through and update that as well. Then the next thing is to review your schedule, the draft schedule that you built or draft checklist that you built last night. Go through and review it so that you're ready to rock and roll. If you need to make any adjustments or additions to it, then go do that. Um, when you're doing the review or setting your priorities for the week and also reviewing your month, the activities that you engage in on a daily basis help you accomplish your weekly goals. The activities you engage in on a weekly basis help you to accomplish your monthly goals. And the activities that you engage in on a monthly basis help you to accomplish your quarterly goals. So it is really important that, you know, it's all the incremental baby steps that you're taking every single day that are going to help you to reach your targets and your goals for the week, the month, and the quarter, in addition to the year. And so um, go through, review that checklist, update it if you need to. And once it's like solidified for the most part, if it's at 99%, then go ahead and read it out loud, speak it into existence. And don't forget to make sure you identify the one thing so that if anything happens today, this is the one thing I need to get done, no matter what. Next, we do invite you or encourage you to go ahead and create your schedule for tomorrow. Just a draft. It doesn't have to be detailed. Just an outline. Write down some thoughts. You'll come back and revisit it anyway. Last but not least, we want you to think about those things that are going to impact or interrupt or disrupt your routine that you're working to build. The things that are going to uh, impact your ability to maintain and sustain this new schedule, this new routine that you're working to establish in your life, where you're working to be more consistent and more focused and more aware, aware and more productive. So one of the things that we, you know, if there's something that's coming up in a day that, you know, your morning routine is normally solidified, but oh my gosh, I got a doctor's appointment in the morning. Well, your goal long-term is not to schedule that doctor's appointment in the morning if you can help it. But um, if you can't control it, then make sure that you shift the things that you would normally do in the morning to another part of the day so that that way you can maintain that consistency that you're working to build. The goal is to maintain the consistency and to not break the pattern where possible. Even if you can't keep it at the same time every single day because there's some things that are completely outside of your control. Um, you know, scheduling a doctor's appointment typically is within your control. Most doctor's offices will have appointments in the morning and the afternoon. But if it is a situation where they're like, this is the only option for the next three months, then you take what you can get and you work it out. So I just want to encourage you based on whatever your schedule is, is that if you have disruptions, this is where people fall off the wagon and that New Year's resolution just goes to pot very quickly. They just don't even make any progress on anything because of the fact that, you know, that New Year's resolution is just like evaporated. They broke the pattern once and then it's easy to break it again and again and again. And so then now you're, you know, into June or July and you're trying to figure out why you're not making any progress on anything. So the goal is to get you back on track as quickly as possible. Where you know you're going to have these disruptions, make adjustments in your schedule to accommodate them. Where there are going to be bigger disruptions, like maybe you've got to have surgery, and so you're going to be out for several days, or you're going to be down for several days, or you're going to uh, 
maybe you're caring for somebody else or you're going on vacation or you've got to travel for your job or for your business, then what you want to do is you want to look at the bigger picture. Look at the weeks before and the weeks after, the days before and the days after and make adjustments and make sure you're doing those key income producing activities or you have a game plan for those so that that way when you get back to your regular routine, you can get back in the gear without falling, without missing a step, without missing a step, without falling off the wagon. So I hope that's helpful. Think about those disruptions or interruptions that are going to impact your ability to maintain and sustain the momentum you're working to build in your business and the consistency. Think about those pattern interrupts because those are the things that are going to cause you to stop and you'll find yourself setting New Year's resolutions again next year. So with that, um, my name is Nicole Whitlock. This is the daily econ planning session. We do this every day, typically at 7 a.m. I apologize. Uh, I was waiting on a communication that came in and I should not have looked at it. I've got, that is one of the things that I've got to do better, not look at the email. But in any case, and that is one of my Achilles heels. <laughs> um, but, but with that, uh, we invite you to come back again tomorrow for the daily econ planning session at 7 a.m. where we'll cover another versus. And with that, I hope that you have an amazingly blessed, extremely productive and highly profitable day. And we're going to say goodbye for now. We'll still live on Clubhouse if you want to continue the conversation.